WGAA. W291 DN Cedartown. Playing yesterday's favorites and today's hits. AM 1340. And now 106.1 FM WGAA. John Saucier, there was a rattling in the Northeast today, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake, which was epicentered in Lebanon, New Jersey. The mayor of the town, James Pettinger, on the Fox News Channel with some reaction. Individuals are rattled, but um, it doesn't seem, knock on wood, that we have uh, any any significant damage. This was felt far beyond just New Jersey. Several. The following is a presentation of WGAA Sports. To the wall! Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. 106.1 FM and AM 1340. Broadcasting online at WGAARadio.com and Facebook Live. And now, let's head down to the field for today's action. Good afternoon. Welcome to Seertown High School Bulldogs Baseball on the Seertown Bulldogs Sports Network. Andrew Carter along with you here. Uh, we're just underway here in the top of the first inning. Seertown is the visiting team in this ball game, And we already have a 1-0 lead for the Bulldogs. Xavier Holiday single to start the ball game, And then moved over to second base on a pass ball. And then over to third base eventually and came home to score on a uh, RBI ground out by Ace Allen. So we've got one gone here in the top half of the first inning, and Tony Ware is up at the play for the Bulldogs. Pitch is going to be ball, a ball. It's going to be the count of one ball and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes, beg your pardon. Get everything settled up here as we're just underway here. Seertown Bulldogs wearing their red jersey tops. Whitewater Wildcats. Wearing maroon tops with white pants. The pitch missed. It's three balls and two strikes now to the batter. Three balls, two strikes, one out, and one in. A swing and a miss, strike three, and Tony Ware is down on strikes. That'll be out number two. So Ware is going to take a seat. And that'll bring up Samuel Formby to the plate for the Bulldogs. Glad to have you with us here from Lake Point Sporting Community here at uh, in Emerson, a place that has uh, really experienced uh, quite a bit of growth over the years and continues to grow. There's a new hotel being built just beyond the outfield fence, beyond the parking lot. Pitches outside, ball one to Samuel Formby, one and oh the count. Dogs one, Cedartown nothing. One run on one hit here in the top of the first for Cedartown. We'll get to your lineups here as, uh, as we can. 1-0 the count. And the pitch on the way is going to get back to the backstop. Two balls and no strikes. Beautiful day for baseball. It's a little chilly outside. Right around 60 degrees. The wind is blowing straight in. That gigantic American flag in straightaway center field is pointed right at us. The 2-0 pitch, high and away, three balls and no strikes to count. Dale and Holiday, the DH, would be next. The 3-0 pitch on the way to Samuel Formby, right down the middle for a call, strike one. And the count goes to three balls and one strike. Three-one pitch on the way. It's fouled back our way. Three and two the count. So full count now to the Bulldogs. I'll tell you what position he is here in a moment. I think uh, the game changer folks. I say our game changer folks are still putting all the data in and. 
we just have gotten started up here. Comes the payoff pitch. Inside corner called strike three. Samuel was on his way to first base. He thought he was aboard with a walk. But that will give Cedartown the lead one to nothing through with one hit through a half inning of play. Let's head now to the bottom half of the first. We'll take a 30 second break and come back with more Cedartown High School baseball on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Cedar Valley Golf Course has been the place to play golf in Cedartown and Polk County for nearly a century. Locally owned and operated since 1924, Cedar Valley Golf Course offers 18 holes of some of the most beautiful fairways and greens in the area. Cedar Valley Golf Course is a proud supporter of the Cedartown High School Bulldogs and the greater Cedartown and Polk County region. Call for tea time, 770-748-9671, located just south of Cedartown and 1811 Buckhannon Highway. Cedartown's original golf course, Cedar Valley Golf Course. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Back here to Lake Point. Field number 16 here, which is the first field you uh, walk past when you come in the main entrance. Cedartown and Whitewater facing each other. We'll go down the starting lineup for the Cedartown Bulldogs. We'll start with this. We have X Holiday, who you saw, who's playing shortstop today. Ace Allen batting second. You already saw him. He's at second base. In center field, Tony Ware batting third, batting fourth. The right fielder, Samuel Formby. Batting fifth, the D.H. Dalen Holiday. He's hitting for the starting pitcher for the Bulldogs, Cole Cochran. Everett Perkins is playing the hot corner over third. He's batting sixth. Batting seventh, the first baseman, senior Cole Dingler. Dakota Matthews getting the start behind the play today. He is batting eighth for himself. And Bernie Blackman is playing left field today. He's batting ninth. And for the Whitewater Wildcats, it'll be um, Paxton Benoit to lead it off, followed by Chris Noggles. Trent Ellington, Devin um, Elson, Elson Peter, Trey Robbins, Austin Davis, Will Rowan, TJ Thacker, and Landon Moran will be your batters for the Whitewater Wildcats. Cedartown played the Woodland Wildcats yesterday, playing Whitewater today, and tonight the nightcap, Cedartown will face the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes. Wind really blowing in from center field. It's really beating our microphone out there, and Everybody's uh, jerseys are flapping in the wind. First pitch, fouled away, strike one, number 33, Paxton Benoit. No balls, one strike to count. And the pitch, just missed. One ball and one strike to count. the 1-1. One, one. Missed inside. Two balls and a strike. Cole Cochran getting the start today. X Holiday started the ball game last night. Pitched, pitched uh, some good innings. That one just misses. 3-1 and one the count now to Benoit. But uh, unfortunately some defensive miscues and uh, allowed some runs to score as the Bulldogs fell 4-1 to one to the Woodland Wildcats. Ball four just missed upstairs. That'll put a man on first base. So Benoit reaches. That'll bring up Chris Noggles, N-O-G-G-L-E-S. He is playing the left field position. Pa uh, Paxton Benoit, by the way, playing right field. Pitch on the way is outside. Good stop there by Dakota. One ball, no strikes to count. Pitch on the way to him. Bunt try down the right side. Pretty good play. It's going to just roll foul. Good job there by Cole Dingler to let that thing roll for a bit. And it does roll foul, so it's going to be a strike one to the batter, Noggles. One ball, one strike to count. Yeah. 
Pitch on the way. Is a strike throw, goes down to second base, a little bit of a lay on the throw, it bounces up there, and he's in there safely. The pitch runner goes for third. It's high and it goes over the head of the third baseman Perkins, and he's going to score. And we're going to be tied one to one. An air on the throw right there from Dakota Matthews as it was thrown up too high over the head of Everett Perkins. And an unearned run will result in a one nothing, one one tie here in the first inning. And the count is three balls and one strike. One pitch is a swing and a miss, and it's three and two. Ball four. So Noggles reaches on a base on balls. Uh, not the best start for the Bulldogs if you're uh, Coach Johnson in the staffing. Dakota Matthews will jog to the mound to have a talk with his pitcher. So a run is in on the advancement on a stolen base, stolen base to third, and then of course the error on the throw that allowed him to score on the throw toward third. So Benoit scores the first run to this point, two walks to start out the inning for Cochran. Cochran looks the runner back over at first. Comes from the stretch and the delivery. It's skied foul left side. 0 and 1 the count. No balls, one strike. We are just underway here. Moments ago. Seertown scored a run in the first on one hit. So far, the Wildcats a run on no hits. That pitch misses low. Throw goes down to second base. Shorts hop the, at first. They got him at second base. It was to the first base side of the bag. The throw did short hop, but he got a friendly hop off the turf out there, and he nails the runner Noggles for out number one. So the base is now empty. And one gone. Even if you want to hop it, if you can get up there in time, and he did, it, it beat the throw. The count is no balls and two strikes, according to the home plate umpire. Pitch on the way from Cochran, taken outside, ball one, one ball, two strikes. We are tied up one to one here. Two pitch is sky to the right side toward the other baseball field, field number 13 to our right. Count is one and two. Here comes the one two pitch. A breaking ball swung and missed for strike three. Good looking pitch there from Cole Cochran. Got him to offer at that, and that's out number two. So Ellington strikes out. That'll bring up uh, Eisenpeter, the center fielder. First strike out of the day for Cole Cochran. I said Eisenpeter. It's Elson Peter. Breaking ball tried to go through the back door. He missed outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Cole Cochran, 16, 17 pitches. Check. Seven strikes. You'd like to make that ratio a bit better. That one just missed. Two.
two balls and no strikes. The count now to the batter, Elson Peter. The wind, the pitch on the way from Cochran is outside as well. Ball three. Here's the pitch right there for a called strike, three and one. Three balls, two, three balls and one strike with two outs. Cole trying to strike out the side here. The kick and the delivery is outside ball four. That's the third walk of the inning. And that'll put a two out base runner aboard at first base as Elson Peter walks. That'll bring up Robbins. Robbins, the starting pitcher, and he is a uh, he's a hoss, folks. He's a over six feet tall. Just looks very strong. Left-handed batter from the left-handed batter's box. So they'll have to be careful here. First pitch to him is going to catch the inside corner for a call strike one. Nothing in one the count. One one tie here in the bottom half of the first. Cedartown is the visiting team in this ball game. Matthews sets up outside. The pitch goes inside. Runner takes off for second. Throw goes down there. And another great tag and safe. Apparently, they did not get him. That, good shot, baby. X Holiday laid down a great tag, but the field umpire said no, he did not get the tag down. So the count one and one. The runner moves up to second base. And I wouldn't be shocked if they tried to go to third base here. Already thrown the ball away to third one time. He gets a big lead there, bounces up there. Good stop there by Matthews, two and one the count. Bottom half of the first, one one tie, Cedar Town and Whitewater. Here's the two one, it's upstairs, ball three. And Cole is having trouble finding the strike zone this afternoon. He has definitely got more balls than strikes so far in his pitch count. Only nine strikes out of 24 pitches. There's a tapper toward the left side. That'll be foul. Three and two. Since we've been, since we came here, since we came here last year, of course, me not being in the uh, travel ball circuit, I don't come here that often, only when Seagertown is here. But since that time, they have laid down new turf here, and it looks absolutely beautiful. And everything on the field is turf. There's no dirt. Runner goes, swung, and it's fouled to the right side. And we'll do it again on a 3-2 count. But they've got new turf down here on these fields. And it looks really nice. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second. Base hit could give Whitewater the lead. And the 3-2. A high tapper over the head of the pitcher to second base. And the peg to first from Allen to Dingler is in time, and the side is retired. Three walks in the inning. One run comes across. No hits. And one left as we head to the second inning. We're tied 1-1, one -one, Cedartown and Whitewater. Back after this 60-second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Cedartown Automotive is your one stop for all your automotive needs. For oil changes, new tires, or tire repair, brake work, tune-ups, air conditioner service, or repair, think of Cedartown Automotive. Cedartown Automotive is a longtime supporter of Cedartown High School Athletics here on WGAA. Cedartown Automotive on East Avenue in Cedartown. Give them a call today at 770-749-5040 or stop by their beautiful location for fast and friendly service. And all the folks at Cedartown Automotive say, Go dogs! Looking for a good used vehicle? Don't go out of town. Come see the folks at Dingler Motor Company, 526 North Main Street. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Dingler Motor Company can get you back on the road in no time with their in-house financing. Top quality, pre-owned, late model cars, trucks, and SUVs. Stop by and check out their wide selection at 526 North Main Street across from Livewire Surplus. Call them at 770-748-0906. Search them on Facebook at Dingler Motor Co. That's Dingler Motor Company. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Right. 
Welcome back, Sear Town Bulldogs baseball here on the Sear Town Bulldogs Sports Network. Glad to be along with you here from Lake Point. Andrew Carter with you here on the Big Double A. Sear Town Bulldogs Sports Network on a beautiful day for baseball, as we mentioned, but uh, it is a tad bit chilly out there. Just a bit. But beautiful nevertheless. 1 1 tie, Cedar Town with one hit in the first inning. Brought home one run across. Cedar Town with an error in the bottom half of the inning on the throw that resulted in a run on no hits. Dalen Holiday will lead it off for the Bulldogs here in the second. And the first pitch to him is a called strike, 0-1. Let's go. <laughs> the pitch. Upstairs, pops off the glove of the catcher, but no harm with him, uh, with nobody being on base. In the inning, it'll be Dalen Holiday, followed by Everett Perkins and Cole Dingler. Five, six, and seven in the batting lineup. Here's the one-one to Day Day, and it's outside. Ball two, two and one to count. Dalen Holiday, Cedar Town's designated hitter, and he is—he uh, can—he can smack the baseball hard. We've seen him do it a, a lot this year. Off-speed pitch misses up, three and one. Ace Allen got the only. Base hit for the Bulldogs. Actually, it was X Holiday who got the base hit. Ace Allen drove him in. There's a called strike to fill the count up. Three and two now to Dalen Holiday. Three balls, two strikes, and there's a tapper. A little tapper hit back to the pitcher. Should be an easy play, and it will be as they feed over to first base. One three on the putout, and that will retire the Cedartown DH. So Dalen Holiday will take a seat. Here's Everett Perkins, Cedar Town's freshman starting third baseman. The pitch. Called strike. Nothing in one the count. Robbins, the starting pitcher. Nuggles in left. Elson Peter in center. Benoit in right. Moran at third, Ellington at short, Davis at second, Thackers at first, Rowan behind the plate, that pitch missed. One ball, one strike to count now with one out to Everett Perkins. The line, the pitch, swing and a miss. Came up empty on that swing from Robbins, and Perkins is behind the count. One and two. Robbins deals. Hit off the end of the bat, a little squibbler to second base. It'll be picked up over there by Davis on the first, and Thacker tags the bag for out number two. So that's two gone here in the top of the second inning. Two up, two down. Here is Cole Dingler, the senior first baseman. Cedartown, as we mentioned earlier, in the red jersey tops. Whitewater wearing maroon tops. Pitch on the way, hits him on the leg. That one, that'll sting on a cool afternoon. Bad release point there by Robbins as Dingler will take his base here with two outs. Coach Johnson actually may go check on him. In fact, he's actually looking over there to his uh, first base coach just to kind of get a word. And looks like he's all right. He's just trying to shake the sting off. So Dingler reaches on the hit by pitch, and now it'll be. Dakota Matthews, who gets the start today behind the plate. I don't know if Dakota started yesterday, but he hasn't started many games lately. But he's back out there with the Bulldogs here this afternoon. And the pitch on the way to Matthews, just missed inside. One ball, no strikes. Cole Dingler, the runner at first base. Cedartown and Whitewater tied one to one. 1-0 one -oh pitch. Ball two, that one must have been low. 
two and nothing. We attempted to set up our center field camera, but there's no uh, that pitch that no pitch over there. They actually throw it to first, and then we're back safely. We can't get our signal through the glass here, and that's just part of it. So we'll just go with a one angle today. If you're watching on video, 2-0 pitch is inside ball three. Brody Blackman waiting on deck if this inning continues. And Robbins is a pitch away from walking, and it's going to be a called strike. Three and one. In fact, it, Matthews was halfway to first base, and I mean that literally. He literally had tossed the bat away and was about halfway to first base by the time the strike was called. So it's three and one now. We'll see if Dakota's swinging on this pitch. I would think he would be if it's close. And he does not swing, and it's a called strike. Kind of a deliberate call there by home plate umpire. Three balls and two strikes, so now Robbins has Matthews right where he wants him. Here's the payoff pitch. That ball is hit in the air, a little shallow fly ball to the left side. The shortstop ranges to the outfield grass, or outfield turf, I should say, and makes a great catch. Ellington, almost to the left field position, makes the catch, and the dogs leave a runner stranded at first base. We head now to the bottom half of the second, Cedartown 1 and Whitewater 1. 60-second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Rocky and Patty Tillery, two Cedartown High School graduates, and they stayed right here in the county and went into business. They employ right at 100 people, and they've been doing that for a long time. Most of their work is from out of the county, but they want to push our youngsters here, no matter what they're doing, Little League, Pony League, high school baseball, basketball, football, and soccer, and that's Polk County Public Service. They appreciate serving you. Are you ready for steel? Equipment, that is. At Croker's Hardware in Cedartown, we've got all the steel equipment. Blowers and shredder vacs, chainsaws, augers and drills, trimmers and brush cutters. We're very proud to be a retailer for the steel product line. As an independent dealer, we can provide many services that the big box chain stores just can't match. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff is always ready to help you select the equipment that meets your specific needs. So call Croker's for a steel today. That's 770-748. 4842 to learn more about steel in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Back to Lake Point Sporting Complex. Field 16 here in Emerson. And we've got a 1-1 tie. Dogs with one run on one hit, one error. Whitewater one run, no hits, and no errors. Cole Cochran continuing his warm-up tosses. Had to wait for Dakota Matthews to get his gear on as he was at the plate and was the side retired. Davis, Rowan, and Thacker do up six, seven, and eight in the white water lineup. First pitch is upstairs. Did he go? I don't think so. One ball, no strikes. One zero is a high chopper. Second base, a sound fields and throws wide of the bag, and a good job. Oh, it tried to catch up to it. Backing up was Matthews. That'll be an infield hit for Davis. So Davis reaches on that high chopper. It'll be taking a perfect throw, and still, I don't know if they would have gotten it. So Davis aboard on the leadoff hit. That's their first hit. And now it'll be the catcher, Rowan. Possibly a double play candidate. Called strike outside corner, nothing in one to him. The throw kind of got away from Matthews there as he threw it back to the, to the mound. And again, no dirt out there. The, even the, uh, the base paths, the mound, around home plate, it's all dirt-colored turf. Missed upstairs, one and one. The only dirt is behind the uh, 
the outfield fence. And I know that because I walked through getting here. Chopper, chopper toward third base. The only play will be to first. A throw over there from Perkins is in time. They throw back to second base and just barely got back to the runner, Davis. Davis took a wide turn from second, and the throw back up there almost got him picked off of the bag there. But it's going to be one out, runner to second. Rowan moves the runner over, and now it'll be Thacker. Davis, the runner at second on a 1-1 tie. First pitch bounced up there. Good stop there by Matthews. It was outside. One ball, no strikes. Uh, I guess they're still working on it. Uh, that needs to be on there. Let me call it, Betty. Runners with their leads. Runner with his lead, I should say. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there from Cole Cochran. One one the count. I'll tell you what, folks, the uh, the bots are in full force today. If you see a link pop up on our page hey, is, is he not about there being something, six -speed truck yet? you're gonna well, it, just it don't, don't click on it. It needed to be rinsed off. Here's the one one. Okay. Taken upstairs. Uh, uh, Two balls, one strike. Seertown one, Whitewater one. Each side with a hit apiece, and we got a meeting on the mound down there. Get it down. Get it down. Actually, it wasn't even Matthews. It was Ace Allen out there to talk to Cochran. Two won the count. Cole Cochran kicks and deals. Taken upstairs. Three balls and one strike. Cochran's already walked three batters. Back in the first inning. Three and one the count. And the pitch is outside ball four. Fourth walk surrendered by Cole Cochran. So he's a bit rusty out there. First walk of this inning, and that'll take us to the bottom of the order. Third baseman, Moran. He'll bat with one out and two runners aboard. Davis at second, Thackers at first. Cochran through an inning and a third. That's upstairs, ball one, one ball, no strikes. Inning and a third, he has 40, take that, 39 pitches, only 16 strikes. Time called at the plate as Moran steps out. Now he's back in the box. Runners with their leads. The 1-0 pitch. Bounced up there. Nobody goes anywhere. Keeps it in front. Two balls, no strikes. Dakota's been a workhorse back there, handling a few bouncers. Two and nothing the count. Cochran. Comes set. The stretch from the belt and the pitch. Low and in. Three balls and no strikes. He's in danger of walking the bases loaded. This is the first of two ball games today. We've got this one, and then Cedartown faces future region foe, Cartersville Purple Hurricanes, kind of the home team of this tournament. Fastball away, ball four, and he did it. Four straight pitches will load the bases. So the base is full with only one out. Matthews heads to the pitcher's mound. No coaching visit for Cedartown just yet. I'm looking out that way. I don't see anybody out there. Right now, this is just a meeting between Matthews and Cochran. That'll take us back to the top of the order. The 
The right fielder, Benoit, led off this game with a walk and later came around to score their only run to this point. But Whitewater in a good spot right here to possibly take the lead and maybe a lot more. Fifth walk surrendered by Cochran after that free pass just a moment ago. So Davis at third, Thacker at second, Moran at first. Pitch to Benoit. Outside ball one. Runners lead away from the backs. The 1-0 pitch. There's a call strike. Painted the inside corner there. 1-1 one, one the count. The pitch. Little flare to the center field side. Ware will let it drop. One run is going to score. That's going to be it. Throw comes into the infield. Ware was the only one who was going to have a chance to get to that little blooper out there. And Whitewater takes a two to one lead on the dying duck out there in shallow center field. So give Benoit an RBI. He's also got a run score, two to one. And here's the left fielder, Nuggles. Nuggles also walked his last time up, and now we've got a coaching visit. That appears to be Coach Johnson. He's going to take the ball away from, from Cole Cochran. So Cochran's day is a short one. He goes an inning in the third, and we'll come back after 60 seconds and tell you about the new pitcher when we return. Cedartown trailing now 2-1 to one to Whitewater. Back after 60 seconds on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Timeout. All right. Remember, we're a team that plays together. Listen, the winning will take care of itself. We just have to get everyone involved. In interscholastic sports, we celebrate what makes every one of us unique. And in the pursuit of a common goal, everyone in the huddle, in the bleachers, and in the community comes together. This message presented by the GHSA and the Georgia Athletic Directors Association. Make the right play. Go to Peach State Ford in Cedartown today. Rush to Peach State Ford in Cedartown. Peach State Ford has a championship lineup of new and pre-owned vehicles. Peach State Ford is now open in your backyard. Peach State Ford is proud to be part of your local community. Whether you're waiting for your vehicle to get service, picking up a part for your vehicle, or stopping by to check out a new vehicle for yourself, Peach State Ford offers a wide range of amenities to enhance your experience. Peach State Ford in Cedartown, 2076 Rockmart Highway, 770-748-3673. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Back here to Lake Point, new pitcher for the Cedartown Bulldogs will be Connor Peak. So close the book on Cole Cochran, the uh, base runners. The, well, you can close the book. The three base runners on base are his responsibility, we should say. But in any of the third, one hit, two runs. None of them earned five walks, one strikeout. So not exactly the uh, the start he wanted, but we'll hope for Connor Peak here to uh, get out of the, in the inning with a little less damage. Connor seems to be uh, really uh, chunking it hard out there. So your base runners, Thacker, Moran, and Benoit from left to right. Noggles, the batter. His last time up was put aboard with a walk. Wind kind of swirling now, blowing from left to right, as you can see in the American flag, kind of uh, kind of straight out there. So Connor Peak will take over. Pitch on the way is upstairs, ball one. One ball, no strikes to count. Coach Johnson has to go to his bullpen early here. one 0 -oh pitch. Fastball swung and missed. Good pitch there from Peak. Noggles was late on the swing. One ball, one strike. Base is still loaded. One out in the bottom of the second. 1-1. One -one. Foul away right side toward the other field of play. One ball and two strikes, the count. 
Looks like Calhoun might be playing on that field over there. I saw some Calhoun jerseys over over here when we were getting ready to go on the ball game. One ball, two strikes. Peek looking for the strikeout or maybe even a ground out here. That one missed up and away, two and two the count. Connor set, he's got the sign, here's the 2-2. Two -two. Hit on the ground hard toward third and foul. In fact, Thacker, the base runner over at third base, had to kind of dance out of the way of that one. He was leading off the back, kind of standing over in foul territory. Count still two and two. Only one out here in the bottom of the second, the pitch. Chopper, deep shortstop, boots it, and it's going to get through. That's going to score two runs. And now in left field, it's booted. Two runs come across. X Holiday will be charged with an error on that one. And he knows he should have had it. And Whitewater adds two runs to that. It's going to be four to one. X was playing deep, I guess, hoping for a double play, but it was hit too slowly for it to be a double play. I don't even know if they get the runner at first. Here's Ellington, outside ball one. One ball, no strikes, runners now at first and second. So just like that, Whitewater has a three-run lead. High and tight, throw goes down to third base as the runner was uh, leading away, but he does not go, he heads back to the bag. Two balls and no strikes. Slice to the right side and foul ball out of play, two and one. If you're not doing anything this afternoon, come on out to Cartersville, or I said Cartersville, to Bartow County, to Emerson, to Lake Point. See your town will play this evening at six, but you might want to bundle up for that. Ground ball toward the hole, left side, right side, base hit. One run's going to score on that. Throw comes into the middle of the infield. Actually, the run will not score as it as uh, I thought it was going to. He was rounding third and headed home. But a good job there by Samuel Formby to get that ball back into the infield. He has to turn tail and head back to third. But Ellington gets the base hit, and runners will be at every base again. So the base is full once more on a base hit. Ellington with a single. He's now one for two. Now it's going to bring up uh, Elson Peter. He also walked... His last time now we got another meeting between Matthews and Peak. Third base coach for Whitewater out there talking to the field umpire. Short conversation. So the base is loaded again, but Noyes at third, Noggles at second, and Ellington at first. Elson Peter, the center fielder. You guessed it, he walked his last time. Connor P comes set and delivers. Pops away from Matthews, runner is gonna score, it's gonna be five to one. The ball was in the dirt, so that'll probably be a wild pitch. And Whitewater now leads five to one. They've had a four run, bottom half of the second inning. Runners second and third now on the wild pitch. Everybody moves up 90 feet, including the runner from third to home. One ball, no strikes. Peak comes set. And the pitch. Another wild one. But it got a good bounce there for Dakota right back to him so nobody can advance. Two balls and no strikes.
2-0 pitch is drilled to right field, base hit. That's going to score two, maybe. Throw comes toward home plate. They've got to play at the plate. Out. He is out. One run comes across, but that is out number two. It's an RBI single for Elson Peter. But uh, Samuel Formey doing what he does gr uh, well, and that's throwing the ball in. And he had, a, had him dead to rights there at the plate. Six to one the score. Now two outs and a runner on first. Pitcher Robbins fi finds himself with a five-run cushion, and he'll take a called strike one. Robbins is 0 for 1. Throw to first base. Snap throw over there. He's back safely as the runner, Elson Peter. Whitewater six, Cedartown one. We're in the bottom half of the second, a five spot for the Wildcats. Breaking ball didn't break like it was supposed to. It was high and away. And Matthew's out of his stance to get to it. One ball, one strike. Another throw to first base. No tag applied, but pretty good throw. Almost had Elson Peter sleeping over there, but it gets back in time. One ball, one strike with two outs. And the pitch to Robbins. Another bouncer and a good stop there by Dakota. Two and one the count. As I look over to the to my left, I'll tell you about that after this 2-1 pitch. And here it comes from Peak. Called strike two outside corner. Good pitch there from Connor. They're cut, they're carving out a great bit of uh, land over there to our left. There was a mountain, there's still a mountain over there, but they're carving out a lot of land over there as this area continues to grow. Runner goes, pitch is fouled to the right side on a grounder. So Elson Peter will have to head back to first base. But they're building the, as we mentioned before, they're building a hotel just beyond the uh, fields on the opposite side of the complex here. Very close to the ballpark right across the road. Missed inside. Good stop there by Dakota Matthews. And the count now full, three and two. Three balls, two strikes. And another throw to first base. And back safely is Elson Peter. They're guessing since he's the center fielder, he's probably going to run. He's already shown that he's going to run on a payoff pitch, and he might run right here. The 3-2, he is running, and it's line drive foul ball down the left side. I see Elix Gerald down there. He was kind of stand, he was standing right there where the Fence kind of juts out toward foul territory. It's right at him. Of course, he's behind the fence, so he's he's fine. 3-2 pitch. Line shot caught on third base by Everett Perkins. Came to the same spot. They don't call it the hot corner for nothing, and that's exactly what they do. They, he'll catch that over there to end the inning, but it was a costly one for the Bulldogs. Five runs come across in the second inning for Whitewater. They lead now six to one. We'll come back after 60 seconds here on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Live wire surplus, stop in today at 546 North Main Street. New items are arriving all the time. At Livewire, they have unbelievable deals on lawn mowers, weed eaters, and leaf blowers. But that's not all. How about your patio? Livewire has top-of-the-line grills, patio tables and chairs, fire pits, and so much more. All fresh off the truck, brand new, still packaged, and price to sell. Livewire Surplus, 678-861-5021. Take your truck, you're going to need it to load up on the savings. 
Coverage of Cedartown High School Bulldogs baseball on the Big Double A is brought to you in part by Republican State Representative Trey Kelly of Cedartown. This is Representative Trey Kelly. I want to wish all the players and coaches a safe and successful season. You've worked hard to represent us on the field, and I'm proud to represent you in the Georgia House of Representatives. Again, this is Representative Trey Kelly, and I want to thank you for listening to the Big Double A. Go dogs! This announcement paid for by State Representative Trey Kelly, kellyforhouse.com. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome back to Cedartown Bulldogs Baseball. Cedartown would love to put the uh, second inning behind them as they failed to score and then gave up five runs in the bottom half as we head to the third. The Bulldogs will bring to the plate. Let me see. Dakota Matthews was the last to bat in the second, so it'll be 9-1-2. and two. Brody Blackman, X Holiday, and Ace Allen. So 9-1-2 and two will be due up. Against their pitcher, Robbins, two innings pitched for him. One hit, one run allowed. It was unearned. A couple of strikeouts. And that one goes away from him, but one ball, no strikes. Brody getting the start in left field today. 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss. 1-1 on the count, pitch was up on him. But got Brody to offer at it. 1-1 on the count. That one hits Brody in the foot, so Brody Blackman will take his bag. He's a pretty quick runner over there. A lot of times Coach Johnson will employ him as a pinch runner or a courtesy runner, and he's going to be over there at first base and back to the top of the order. X Holiday, he's got the only hit for the Bulldogs and the only run scored. One for one is X Holiday, the shortstop of the ballgame. Rallies have to start somewhere. Why not here? And X Holiday is who you want up there. By the way, the Atlanta Braves will be opening their home series with the National League champs Arizona Diamondbacks tonight at Truist. Breaking ball inside to Holiday. One ball, no strikes. I believe that game will start at 720, and our very own Sam Branch will be enjoying the game from Truist. And good for him. I hope to get up there sometime later this spring to see a ball game. Blackman at first base. The 1-0 pitch to X is going to get a called strike one. I guess it was in outside corner. But uh, definitely not one X wants to swing at. Brody leads away at first. Pitch to Xavier Holiday is a ground ball base hit to the right side. He's going to round second, head toward third. Throw comes to the middle of the infield. It's first and third with one out, and X Holiday is two for two. Good piece of hitting there by Holiday. Getting the base hit down the right side. Benoy picked the ball up, and he threw to the middle of the infield to the, to the relay man, but uh, no time to get Brody. He was already at third base. So that's a chance now for Ace Allen, who has the lone RBI for the Bulldogs. He's 0 for 1 with that RBI. Runners at the corners with nobody out here in the top of the third. Dogs trying to get back in this game. Throw to first base. is away from the bag. It bounces uh, to the corner as Brody Blackman will score. It's 6 to 2. X Holiday moves up to second. 6 2 now the score. So Ace Allen with a base hit here could definitely bring home the speedy X holiday. The stretch by Robbins and the pitch. Upstairs, ball one. Of course, uh, Lake Point is not only baseball. They've got, uh, of course, the baseball fields. They've got, what, eight of them here? Four on this quadrant, four on the other quadrant. But they also have... Soccer pitches here, and they've got a basketball, volleyball indoor facility. High chopper 
to the shortstop. X Holiday has to stay put. Throw to first will just get Ace Allen, so no advance for Holiday. That'll be out number one. On the ground out, 6 3 for Ace Allen. That'll bring up Tony Ware, Bulldogs center fielder, victim of a strikeout his last time. They've got uh, beach style volleyball here. They used to have the zip lines here. I don't know if they still do. Of course, they also have the uh, has there's Lake Point Station up here, not part of the Lake Point community, so to speak, or the Lake Point Sporting Complex, but a place a lot of families like to go. Nasty breaking ball called strike one there to Tony Ware. Nothing and won the count. Of course, the Love Station, which has been here way before all this was ever built, is still out there. In fact, I can see it from our perch up here in the uh, observation tower. I-75 right across the, hills, the hill from us. Now we have time called of coaching visit very quickly. After the pitch was already thrown, and an infield meeting will commence. If they, uh, are they gonna change pitchers here? Yep. Looks like they're going to change pitchers. I guess. I guess. Uh, I guess Robbins had gotten to a certain amount. Yeah, he's got 50 pitches, and I guess that's all that uh, Whitewater's head or head coach wanted him to have. So 50 pitches will finish it for Robbins, and we'll tell you who the new pitcher is when we come back. Cedar Town trailing six to two, a runner at second with one out and an 0-1 count to the batter. Tony Ware back after 60 seconds on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Cedar Stream, the industry leader in screen printed apparel. They offer screen printing, embroidery, and signs and banners. At Cedar Stream, they have a fully automated screen printing facility here in Cedartown with the ability to efficiently and effectively distribute products all over the United States. Cedar Stream is a local family run business with a big vision. Contact Cedar Stream today to find out what they can do for you. 800 686 7488 or cedarstream.com. Cedar Stream, shirts, it's what we do. Hey, it's the Border Mexican Restaurant, located at 718 North Main Street, right here in Cedartown. Their phone number, 678-246-1031. They serve a wide variety of your favorite Mexican food made fresh daily. Great food, great fun. It's great for the whole family. Come see us at the Border Restaurant, right here on Main Street in Cedartown. Or you can call for takeout at 678-246-1031. The Border Mexican Restaurant is the best Mexican food north of the border. That's the Border Restaurant right here in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Back to Cedartown Bulldogs Baseball. The new pitcher is number 21, Ryder Blythe. He will take over on the hill after... Robbins went two and a third, two hits, two runs, only one earned, no walks, and a couple of strikeouts. So Blythe will take over, and he'll inherit an 0-1 count and a runner on second base. As he completes his warm-up tosses, a reminder that we will be with you tonight about 6 o'clock p.m. Cedartown will take on the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes. That'll be it for our ball games this week. Next week, Cedartown back into region play. Waiting for the umpire to get back out there and now we are ready. So again, the count is 0-1, a rare pitching change in the middle of an at-bat. That's foul away to the right side, 0-1. Top half of the third inning, Cedartown has scored one, trying to get more. Foul 
The 0 1 is a ground ball hit to third base, and again, that won't advance the runner. Throw goes on to first in time from Miranda Thacker, and that'll be out number two. A couple of ground balls to the left side. Won't get it done when you got a runner on second. So Tony Ware is retired. And that'll bring up Samuel Formby. Samuel 0 for 1 with a strikeout. The roof here took a direct hit from a foul ball somewhere. Then it rolled off of the awning in front of us and into the field of play. So they had to call time for that. And now we're ready to go. Two outs, runner on second. And a high chopper to first base. He'll win the race, Thacker does, to tag the bag. And the side is retired. Cedartown leaves a runner, but does score one. The score now, Cedartown trailing 6-2 to the Whitewater Wildcats. We'll come back after 60 seconds here on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network, the big double-A. Bradford's Drug Store on North Main Street in Cedartown is your locally owned and operated Good Neighbor Pharmacy. Bradford's accepts most prescription plans and remember Bradford's for all of your gift and decor needs. Bradford's pharmacist takes time to get to know you, explain your medication, and answer any questions that you may have. Go by and see Bill Brewster and all the fine folks at Bradford's the next time you need a prescription filled. Also use their convenient drive through Bradford's Drug Store, 500 North Main Street, Cedartown, 770-748-3100. And all the folks at Bradford's say, Go Dogs. Cedar Valley Golf Course has been the place to play golf in Cedar Town and Polk County for nearly a century. Locally owned and operated since 1924, Cedar Valley Golf Course offers 18 holes of some of the most beautiful fairways and greens in the area. Cedar Valley Golf Course is a proud supporter of the Cedar Town High School Bulldogs and the greater Cedar Town and Polk County region. Call for tea time 770-748-9671, located just south of Cedar Town at 1811 Buckhannon Highway. Cedar Town's original golf course, Cedar Valley Golf Course. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome back to Cedartown Bulldogs Baseball here on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Andrew Carter with you here. High at top here on the observation tower at Lake Point. Cedartown and Whitewater competing on field 16 here at Lake Point. And the new pitcher for the Bulldogs will be Jay O'Neill. He'll take over the Bulldogs' third pitcher. Jay, in his last appearance, looked pretty good. He's uh, coming off of Tommy John surgery uh, last February and has worked his way back up. He's having to build his strength back up. And, of course, coming with that comes with his uh, uh, comes with the control and the velocity and all that. So the Bulldogs uh, are going to give Jay O'Neill some valuable uh innings here in this ball game. Jay's velocity and his movement are really starting to come back. 6-2 the score, Cedartown trails the Whitewater Wildcats. Jay O'Neill kicks and fires to the plate and it's a high chopper left side, Perkins fields, throws, and he will not have a play. It'll be an infield hit for Davis and you know, will that ball go foul? I don't know. It might have had some side spin on it, but uh, Perkins not wasting any time. You know, with with the turf being like it is, you just don't know. It doesn't bounce like it normally does on, on grass. So it'll be an infield hit for Davis. Davis, the second baseman on board. Here's the catcher, Rowan. Rowan digs in. He's 0 for 1. Davis is now 1 for 2. That's foul away. 0 and 1. No balls and one strike. A nearly cloudless day here at Lake Point in Emerson. The pitch. Hit on the ground toward third base and foul. Nothing in two. I believe Cedartown will move to a different field for the nightcap tonight. Throw to first base and back safely is the runner, Davis. We are on the we are on the same uh, 
quadrant of fields. We don't have to move over to a different section of the park. But we will be uh, moving to a different field for the final game today against Cartersville. That pitch missed the zone. It's one and two now, and a throw over to first. One ball, two strikes now. And another throw to first base and a, another close play. But Davis dives back in safely. One, two. Ground ball to shortstop. Could be two, six, four, and three. No, they gets away from, from first base and caroms away. The runner will move up to second base on the errant throw. Jay able to induce the ground ball toward shortstop. So they do get the one out, but the runner is going to move over to second base unless they called him out on an interference play. Nope, they did not. He just goes up there to talk. So, yep, he's going to be he's going to be at second base. He went over to third to kind of toss his uh, batting gear and get his running glove on, his oven mitt. So, one out. Courtesy runner out there for the catcher, number two. That's Drew Gable. That pitch missed in. One ball, no strikes. Seertown trails six to two. Jay delivers, and that's a high fly ball deep to left field. Will the park hold it? Back to the wall, it is gone. A two run home run for Thacker. That ball was drilled, and there wasn't much doubt about that one. The score now eight to two, and that ball was absolutely tattooed to left field. Thacker gets a helmet bump from his uh, teammate as Gable was waiting for him at the plate and the next batter coming up also waiting for him. So Thacker with a two-run home run, 8-2 lead now. On a 1-0 pitch, he drilled it. Swing and a foul tip, 0-1 to Moran. Moran, a walk his last time, and a run scored. Jay delivers an off-speed pitch and a swing and a miss. Nothing in two. I think Moran was expecting the heat and got the cheese. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. And he is out number three, but Woodland, or rather <laughs> Woodland, the uh, Wildcats will get out number two. I thought it was out number three, but it was not. It's out number two. Eight to two the score, so Moran is down on strikes. And back to Benoit at the top of the order. And that pitch misses outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes, there are two out. And O'Neill deals to the plate. Sky to the opposite field and foul. One ball, one strike. One, one. Called strike. Outside corner, all speed pitch. Good looking pitch there from Jay O'Neill. One and two with two outs. And the pitch. Tried the breaking ball again. Missed with it. Two and two. Jay works quickly. And that one just missed a bit low. Three balls and two strikes. Seertown so has walked five batters in the ball game. All five coming from Cole Cochran. Foul tip. Strike three. And that will end the inning. But... 
Seertown surrenders two runs, a two-run home run by Thacker to left field off Jay O'Neill. Extends the lead eight to two as we head now to the bottom, the top half of the fourth after this 60-second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Cedartown Automotive is your one stop for all your automotive needs. For oil changes, new tires, or tire repair, brake work, tune-ups, air conditioner service, or repair, think of Cedartown Automotive. Cedartown Automotive is a longtime supporter of Cedartown High School Athletics here on WGAA. Cedartown Automotive on East Avenue in Cedartown. Give them a call today at 770-749-5040 or stop by their beautiful location for fast and friendly service. And all the folks at Cedartown Automotive say, Go dogs! Looking for a good used vehicle? Don't go out of town. Come see the folks at Dingler Motor Company, 526 North Main Street. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Dingler Motor Company can get you back on the road in no time with their in-house financing. Top quality, pre-owned, late model cars, trucks, and SUVs. Stop by and check out their wide selection at 526 North Main Street across from Livewire Surplus. Call them at 770-748-0906. Search them on Facebook at Dingler Motor Co. That's Dingler Motor Company. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. We head now to the top of the fourth inning. Cedartown trails now 8-2 to two to the Whitewater Wildcats. Dalen Holiday leads off and fouls away to the left side. Strike one. Dalen Holiday, Everett Perkins, and Cole Dingler will be due up here at the top of the fourth. Two runs on two hits for the Bulldogs. Eight runs, five hits for the Whitewater Wildcats. Dalen swings and misses on an all-speed pitch. Nothing in two. Blythe on the mound for the Whitewater Wildcats. Pitching in relief. In the 0-2. Fastball bounced up there. Crashed up against the uh, backstop as you... Well heard, I'm sure. One ball, two strikes. The one, two. Another bouncer. Two balls, two strikes. The two, two. Fastball low and in, ball three. So an 0-2 count has now turned into a 3-2 count. And again, that wind really blowing in from center field. When Thacker hit that two-run home run, he hit it right into the wind. It didn't matter, though. Ball four outside. Good at bat there by Dalen Holiday. Draws the walk after he was behind 0-2. And, and Holiday reaches on the walk. And now Everett Perkins, the batter, he's 0-1, for 1, would love to Get a rally started. Dogs now trailing by six, eight to two. Here at the top of the fourth. Dogs in Cartersville. We'll do battle later on this evening, about six o'clock. Perkins, a big swing and a miss on the fastball. Nothing in one. Here's the 0-1. Fastball again, missed in. Popped away from Rowan for a moment, but he's able to recover. No advance for Holiday. He's not really a threat to move over. One ball, one strike. The 1-1. One, one. Checked his swing. Did he go? Yes, said the home plate umpire. It's one and two. <laughs> One ball, two strikes, now the count. With Holiday over at first, that's Dalen Holiday there. And that missed high and away. Two balls, two strikes. Dalen leading away from the bag at first. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball toward third. They'll get the lead runner at second. No, oh, they won't. He dropped the ball, slides in, safe at second. Had the second baseman over there, Davis, been able to secure the ball, they would have definitely had the force at second base, but he dropped the ball, I guess, in transition or something. And 
good heads-up play there as Dalen Holiday slides in head first and keeps his hand on the bag. And all hands are safe. Runners are at first and second with nobody out. And Coach Johnson may uh, put a pinch runner out there for Holiday. Uh, we'll see if he who he puts out there. Cole Cochran will be the batter for the rather Cole Dingler, I beg your pardon, will be the batter for the Bulldogs. It looks like they will send out a pinch runner for Dale and Holiday. Tell you who that is here momentarily. Here's Dingler. Dingler takes a call, strike one. So the pinch runner for Dalen Holliday is at second, and first base is Everett Perkins and Cole Dingler who was hit by pitches last time there. He'll ground ball one there to the third base side and foul. 0 oh and two. The 0-2 oh pitch. Call strike three, got him looking on the outside corner. Tough luck there for Cole Dingler. He'll take a seat. Dakota Matthews will come to bat here. Unless they pinch hit for him, and they will. Looks like Gavin Allred is going to bat for Matthews here. So the day done for Matthews as well as Gavin Allred will be at the plate with one out and runners on first and second. And the first pitch to him, a fastball called strike one. The stretch, the 0-1, outside, one ball, one strike. Mid-afternoon baseball here from Lake Point here in Emerson. We'll have an evening ball game for you later on against Cartersville. The 1-1 popped up to the right side, probably going to be out of play. It will be. It lands in the field adjacent to us on the right side. It's now one and two to Gavin Allred. Blythe comes set. The one, two, fouled back to the screen. And we shall do it again. One to the count. Blythe checks the runners and the pitch on the way. Just missed outside. And the count now two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one outs. Gavin Allred his first at bat. Brody Blackman is on deck. He is out there, so he'll be hitting for himself. The 2-2. Line drive up the middle. Base hit. Runner will stop at third. The bases will be loaded for Brody Blackman here. So a good piece of hitting there. All read his first at bat after he came into the ball game for Matthews. They'll put out a courtesy runner for Gavin out there first base, I think. Yep. Looks like it might be Jack Roper out there running for him. Yep. It will be it will be Roper there to run for Allred. 
So the bases are full. The, pin, the pinch runner for Holiday, Perkins at second. And Roper's at first. First pitch is uh, ball one to Brody Blackman. Brody, a run scored his last time he got hit by pitch. 1-0 pitch on the way. Brody takes up, ball two. Bases loaded, a golden chance here for the Bulldogs to dig their way back into it. The 2-0, foul back 2-1. Two balls, one strike. And time has been called. Now we are ready to go. The wind and the 2-1. Call strike right down the middle, and he looked at it. Two and two. X Holiday waiting on deck. He has got multiple hits, two for two. And the 2-2 pitch to Blackman. He fouls it away. Good job there to protect the plate. It stays alive. Big opportunity here for Brody Blackman with the bases full and a 2-2 count. Blythe looks in to Rowan for the sign, the kick, and the pitch. Low and away, 3-2. Three balls, two strikes, and the payoff pitch, here it is. Just missed, ball four. That'll walk home a run, and Cedartown will score their third, and it's now eight to three, and Xavier Holiday will be the batter. And X is not the person you want to see with the bases loaded and only one out. So that'll put Perkins at third. Roper at second and Brody Blackman at first. You got speedy base runners at every base, and then you got X Holiday at the plate, who's also a fast runner. First pitch to Holiday. Ball one, missed up. Xavier is two for two with a run scored. Two of the Bulldogs' three hits belong to it. Outside and low, ball two. And now Rowan heads to the mound to talk to Blythe. Base is full, a run is in. And the count is 2 0 to Xavier Holiday. Blythe delivers. Taken upstairs off his glove, but uh, in a wise decision there by Perkins not to try to score there because it wasn't far enough away. But that's ball three. And one pitch away from another run coming home. And if that happens, that'll bring the tying run to the plate. Three and nothing now to Xavier Holiday. The pitch. Ball four, not even close. Eight to four now the score as everybody moves up 90 feet and the tying run will come to the plate and that of Ace Allen. Ace is over two with an RBI. Now we have time called, a coaching visit from the dugout for Whitewater and one would think this might be the end of the day for Blythe. Perhaps just a talking to. He hasn't taken the ball away from him yet. Don't forget, Cedar Town and Cartersville will do battle tonight at six on the diamond. We'll have that for you here on the Cedar Town Bulldog Sports Network as well. Cedar Town will resume region play next week. Monday, we'll take on the uh, Southeast Raiders at home. 
And right now it's looking like Wednesday, Cedartown will go to Southeast for a double header. And then we wrap up the regular season the following week with a game at home against Sonoraville and then a double header on the road to wrap up the regular season, hoping the dogs not only lock up a playoff berth, but also maybe a home playoff berth after the way the season started and getting swept by Heritage. Dogs hoping for some magic to happen and maybe they can not just get in the playoffs, but maybe even get a, a home berth in the first round. Ace Allen now at the plate with the bases still full. And he'll take one right there in the zone for strike one. Nothing can won the count. The fastball there from, from Blythe. Right. Chopper toward the left side. Foul ball. Nothing in two now. Still only one out here in the top of the fourth. Seertown has put two runs across. Take out that five-run inning. This is uh, Seertown would be leading right now. But you can't take out bad innings. As much as you'd like to do it, you can't do it after it's already happened. The 0-2 is fouled away. It's off the pole that supports the netting behind home plate. And the count will stay nothing at two on Ace Allen. Two. Did he go? Home plate umpire says yes. That's a strikeout. Two gone. Ace Allen will take his seat. That'll be his first strikeout. And now Tony Ware over two with a strikeout. The top of the order, with the exception of X Holiday, has not done a whole lot today. They've all struck out at least once and are a combined 0 for 5. Although Ace Allen did have an RBI back in the first inning. So it's up to Tony Ware if the dogs were able to get any more runs. Fastball strike. Nothing in one now to Tony Ware. Tony's deep. Here's the 0-1. A breaking ball inside and high. One and one, not a bad idea to come in on him like that. Maybe you can get a call. If he locates that a bit farther outside, he might get the call. That bounced up there. Two balls and a strike now to Tony Ware. Two one pitch. Just missed for ball three, and I tell you what, Blythe wanted that one, and everybody in Maroon did too. Three balls and one strike. Is Tony swinging away here on a 3 1 with two outs and the base is full? Let's see. Here it is. Ball four, not even close. Another bases loaded walk will make it eight to five. So Tony Ware will. Be at first base, has an RBI now. And now Samuel Formby is 0 for 2 with a strikeout, but we know Samuel has the power to hit it out of here. And with the wind blowing like it is, he could probably, and being a left-handed batter, it's blowing kind of in and to the right. He could kind of put one up in the jet stream and get it out of here. And a grand slam would put Cedar Town ahead. Pitch on the way to Samuel. Outside corner called strike. Nothing had won the count. Here's the 0-1 to Samuel Formby. Called strike two. Got one in there. Inside corner. No balls, two strikes with two outs. Bases loaded. Three runs have scored in the inning. The 0-2. Hit off the end of the bat to the left field. But it will be playable. The catch is made out there by Noggles, and the inning is over. Cedartown leaves the bases loaded. They get three, though, and are back in the ballgame. It's 8-5 to five now, Cedartown trailing to the 
Whitewater Wildcats. We'll come back with the bottom half of the fourth after this 60-second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Rocky and Patty Tillery, two Cedartown High School graduates, and they stayed right here in the county and went into business. They employ right at 100 people, and they've been doing that for a long time. Most of their work is from out of the county, but they want to push our youngsters here, no matter what they're doing, Little League, Pony League, high school baseball, basketball, football, and soccer, and that's Polk County Public Service. They appreciate serving you. Have you been to Croker's Hardware and Supply lately? Croker's is the place to find everything you need from boots to fencing, from plumbing supplies to wood and gas stove fittings, everything, even paint and flooring. Whether you're building or repairing, everything you need is right here at Croker's Hardware on East Avenue. Name brands galore right here in your back door. Orca and Yeti coolers and tumblers, case knives, native eyewear, buck stove grills, and more. At Croker's, you can find everything. Go by and see the friendly staff there at 1192. Rockmart Highway. That's Croker's Hardware in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome back to Cedartown High School Baseball here on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Andrew Carter with you here. Gail Connor on the controls at the radio station doing a good job there. Throw goes down to second base, and we're ready to go here. Gail's probably turning uh, all shades of red that I mentioned her name. <laughs> but you're doing a good job, Gail. Thank you very much. Bottom of the fourth, it's really an all-new ball game. Cedartown scoring three runs in the top of the fourth inning, and Jay O'Neill will go to work. He'll face Noggles, Ellington, and Elson Peter. Jay delivers. Called strike right there. Nothing in one of the count. The 0 1. Called strike two. Got one there on the outside corner. And the count now, nothing in two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Three pitches takes care of Noggles. And he's out number one as. Uh, Jay O'Neill looking pretty fresh after getting that break there. By the way, the DH is now hitting for O'Neill. He works quickly. The first pitch is hit the other way and foul, 0-1. Jay comes set. Pitch to All Red, or All Red is the catcher, and now it's a foul tip, nothing in two. Ellington, the batter for Whitewater. Ellington today, he is one for two with a strikeout. And he's going to be 0 for three with a strikeout. They'll have to throw him out. The throw goes awry to first. And we have seen that way too many times this season. So it's a strikeout and an E2 on the throw to first base, and they've got a base runner with one out. Throw will not be made to first. But give them a strikeout. But the errant throw, they had to complete the throw to first base and couldn't get it done. But try and... No throw to first. Pitch was, I believe, a strike. Yes. So Ellington reaches. He's at first base. Nothing in one of the count now to Elson Peter, and he'll take a called strike two. I wonder if Ellington's going. He is not right now. Swing and a miss. It's in the dirt, but they will not uh, the first base occupied. He will not go to first, and that is out number two. So another strikeout for Jay O'Neill. That's his, let's see, how many does he have so far? He has five strikeouts. So 
Good job, Jay. Throw back to first base. Ellington back safely. In fact, that was his third strikeout of the inning. That one gets away. Back to the backstop. Right near our microphone, I'm sure you heard it. One ball and no strikes. And to second base goes Ellington. The count one and nothing. Runner Deeks now the pitch on the way is fouled back to the screen. One ball, one strike. Battle for Bartow Classic here at uh, Lake Point. Seertown fell four to one yesterday, down eight to five right now. Two outs, a one-one count to Robbins, who was the starting pitcher now batting in that spot. The 1-1. Did it hit him? No. It was inside, 2-1. and one. We continues to spin around the field. That one's fouled straight back our way. And the count is two and two. Deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. And a runner on the second. Bottom half of the fourth. Ellington at second base. He reached on a ball that was thrown to first base on a strikeout that was away, and that's outside. And now the count is full three and two. Can Jay get four strikeouts in one inning? Three balls, two strikes with two outs. Payoff pitch. Ball four upstairs. So he loses them on a pitch that missed up, and that will bring up the next batter. As we go down the list, it'll be Davis. Davis, one for two with a run score. Ellington's at second. Robbins is at first. Sixth walk of the ball game for Cedartown pitching. O'Neill will look the runners back to the bags. Still has a chance to strike out four in the inning. But whether you do, whether you don't, you just want to get the out. Swing and a miss. Good start there. Nothing in one the count. No balls, one strike. Two on, two out. Sear Town trails eight to five. And that one hits him, I think. Yes, it did. And the runners will move up, and it will be bases loaded. So it was looking pretty uh, favorable for O'Neill, but then the walk and the hit batsman have loaded the bases. Everett Perkins went over there to talk to Jay on the mound. So two outs, dangerous situation though here with Rowan at the plate. Rowan is over two though. But a base hit could score multiple runs. Chopper to shortstop. X Holiday fields to and goes to second. The short route, that'll be the inning. So it was a little bit interesting. Three strikeouts in the inning. An errant throw on a strikeout to first base. A walk and a hit. Bassman loaded the bases up. And then the ground out to shortstop ended at things. So the Whitewater Wildcats leave them loaded in the fourth. We head now to the top of the fifth. Cedartown trails 8-5. to five. Back after this 60-second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. What's the biggest myth about interscholastic performing arts? 
that you have to be the most talented or experienced to participate. The truth is anyone can be a part of their school's performing arts. There are countless opportunities for students to participate, from theater, choir, and band, to speech and debate. The bottom line, if you want to perform, there's a place for you. This message presented by the NFHS and the GHSA. Make the right play. Go to Peach State Ford in Cedartown today. Rush to Peach State Ford in Cedartown. Peach State Ford has a championship lineup of new and pre-owned vehicles. Peach State Ford is now open in your backyard. Peach State Ford is proud to be part of your local community. Whether you're waiting for your vehicle to get serviced, picking up a part for your vehicle, or stopping by to check out a new vehicle for yourself, Peach State Ford offers a wide range of amenities to enhance your experience. Peach State Ford in Cedartown, 2076 Rockmart Highway, 770-748-3673. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Another new pitcher on the mound for the Whitewater Wildcats. It'll be number 20, Hunter Greatzer. Hunter Greatzer will take over. And the line for Blythe, he goes in inning in two thirds, gives up a hit, three runs, one earned, four walks, two strikeouts. So Greatzer will take over. He'll face Dalen Holiday to start the inning. Dalen Holiday, Everett Perkins, and Cole Dingler do up. Dalen is 0 for 1. He's walked, and when he walked, he scored. Top of the fifth, here we go. The Cartersville Purple Hurricanes are just now entering here. They'll be playing Cedartown next. And that one's sliced to the left side. That's going to get down for a base hit. It's going to be a single the opposite field for Dalen Holiday. So a good start for the Bulldogs here in the fifth inning. That'll be Dalen's first base hit. And now it'll be Everett Perkins. Everett 0 for 2. He scored a run. Whitewater eight, Cedartown five. Dog something cooking here. There's a bouncer at the plate, one ball and no strikes. Looks like Cartersville is gonna take in this ball game. Swing and a miss there for Perkins. One, one. Perkins with a cut in the miss. His back came out of his hands. Now it's one and two to the Bulldogs freshman third baseman. One, two pitch. Bounced up there. Two and two stays in front of the catcher Rowan. Two balls and two strikes. And that'll be down low, full count now, three balls and two strikes. Three, two. Hit up the middle, but the center fielder has it judged and Elson Peter will make the catch and that'll be out number one. Hit solidly, as you heard. It was a loud strike to the bat, but right at the center fielder. One gone in the inning. Here's Cole Dingler. Cole he is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Here's the pitch. It's a strike called. Nothing in one. Here's the 0-1. Popped up to the right side. That'll be out of play. Nothing in two. Level, 
Line drive left field. That ball might get down. No, it won't. It gets caught there, and they ha and Dalen has to head back to the bag. Oh, no. Now, did he catch it or did he not catch it? We never really got a we never really got a clear picture. Coach Johnson is out there talking to the uh, umpire, and he never really got a clear picture. And Coach Johnson is still not happy with the uh, call right there. They may s see if uh, the ball was called. I think the ca the call was out. Yeah, made the call early. And field umpire and home plate umpire are going to talk about this. But I think the call is going to be, regardless, even if it was called, the double play would have been in order. They would have gotten the out at first base because Dalen advanced to second and never went back to first. Now they're going to talk about this. I mean, they, I, wonder if they, I wonder if this call gets changed, actually. Oh, man. It may be. They may bring the uh, Whitewater defense back out there because the Whitewater coach is not happy about whatever he's hearing from. And if that ball was trapped, runners are going to be in first and second. Yeah. I don't think he caught it. No, but he's got to call it. He's got to steal it. You're going. You're going. It looks like the uh, looks like the umpire may have just thrown out one of the uh, Whitewater coaches. So they're going to put Dale and Holly back out there. The base runners are back out. Searstown's going to continue in this inning. So a, a confusing, um, a confusing uh, series of events right there. I guess what I guess what the call was is the ball was trapped, and Whitewater's coach got ejected, or one of their coaches got ejected for some sort of comment. I'm not sure. It wasn't the coach that was talking out there. So either way, it looks like this inning is going to continue, and the dogs are going to have runners on first and second. Gavin Allred is going to be at the plate. So it's going to be ruled a single for for Dingler. At least I think it's going to be Dingler. Yeah, it would be. No, Perkins. So this should be uh, it should be Cole Dingler at the plate, should it not? Nope, it won't be. Cole Dingler's on first. So Cole Dingler's on first. Here's Allred. We're all mixed up here. And there's still only one out, so they actually take away one out. You know, that was a double play that would have ended the inning. So now we're back at it. And the pitch to Allred is going to be sliced foul to the opposite side. Nothing and one the count. The Whitewater coach was upset, and I can understand his frustration on that. Not often do you see a play like that overturn, and it results in two outs being taken off the scoreboard and the inning continuing. There's a pop-up to the right side. Who wants it? It's in foul territory. Off the glove of the second baseman, I think, Davis. And Allred will be alive for another pitch. You know, here at Lake Point, there, the uh, fence, foul territory, there's not a ton of foul territory here. There's some just beyond the infield cut out on the, or at least the, inf the infield dirt colored turf. But then it kind of juts out there and there's not much down the lines. Here's the 0-2. High and away ball one. Most other ballparks, high school ballparks have relatively large foul territory, but not here. They uh, bring in as much real estate as you can to fit as much field as you can here in this space. That one just missed outside, ball two. 
Two balls and two strikes now to Gavin Allred. Top of the fifth, Cedartown trying to get their way back in. Allred represents a tying run. The 2-2. Two -two. Outside, full count, three and two. Greatzer thought he was out of the inning and had to come back out after a discussion between the two umpires changed what was a, a catch ruled in left field. 3-2 is fouled away to the right side. A good hack there by Gavin Allred. What happened was that when, the, when it was ruled a catch, there was some sort of miscommunication on the base pads, and Dalen Holiday was already at second base, and they threw over to first base and doubled him off. But then the call was changed, and here we are. Three and two the count. The pitch to Allred. Ball four upstairs. They're loaded up. Tying run at first. The go-ahead run comes to the plate, and Brody Blackman. And Brody is... He has uh, got a run scored. He has an RBI, and he's walked once. Last time up, he's been hit by a pitch, and he has walked. So no official at bats for him so far, but good times at the plate. Greatzer delivers. High and tight, one ball, no strikes. A walk would make it eight to six. A base hit, eight to six, maybe eight to seven. Extra base hit, possibly eight to eight. 1 0 pitch is swung and missed, one to one. The Cartersville Purple Hurricanes, who made the short drive over from Cottaville, is going to be up. Against Cedartown next. That one a called strike inside corner one and two now to Brody Blackman. The one two. Swing and a miss, strike three, and he can't go because first base is occupied. That'll be out number two. And Blackman is down. But now you bring X Holiday to the plate. X walked in. Drove home a run his last time up, and a base hit would be mighty plentiful for the Bulldogs here. And Holiday, a perfect two for two so far. And you know X is chomping at the bit right now for a big hit. Two outs, bases full. The pitch on the way is upstairs for ball one. One ball and no strikes. One oh. Fouled straight back. Just got a piece of it. One ball, one strike. Seertown and Cartersville will play at six. Maybe later. Depends on how long this game goes. We're only in the bottom half of the fifth or the top half of the fifth in this one. Our game started at three. On one. Breaking ball, called strike two, and X did not like the call. So Holiday's going to have to play, protect the plate right here. Bases full, the one-two pitch with two outs, a breaking ball, fly ball right side. Will it be in play? No. It, oh, is it? Nope, he was out of – he. The ball is caught, but the right fielder ran out of the there's an there's a spot on this field where there is an open area that goes out of play and the right fielder ran into that spot and if you run in there that's basically out of bounds so to speak. It's a, it's foul territory. So they say no play, it's a foul ball. So one ball, two strikes. And X has another chance here. It was a breaking ball, not exactly one he wanted to drive, but it was popped up out there. And the pitch, high and away, two and two. Dogs have had a lot of second chances in this inning. The double play that wasn't, and then 
just now the catch that wasn't. 2-2 pitch, breaking ball, hit toward first base. That is pass first, that's fair. And rounding first and heading to second, two runs are going to score. And it's a one-run ball game. X Holly with a two-run double. The Dogs have cut it to one. It's eight to seven. Just down the first base line, Dalen Holiday and Cole Dingler score. Jack Roper running for Gavin Allred, stops at third, and X Holiday is at second base. He is three for three, and Holiday has gotten the Dogs within one run, and here's Ace Allen now with runners on second and third and two outs. Pitch on the way. Ground ball to second base. The peg to first, low throw but dug up, and that'll be out number three. Cedartown will have to settle for the three runs, but it is now eight to seven. The dogs trail by one. Back after the 60-second timeout with the bottom half of the inning after this. Live wire surplus. Stop in today at 546 North Main Street. New items are arriving all the time. At Livewire, they have unbelievable deals on lawn mowers, weed eaters, and leaf blowers. But that's not all. How about your patio? Livewire has top-of-the-line grills, patio tables and chairs, fire pits, and so much more. All fresh off the truck, brand new, still packaged, and priced to sell. Livewire Surplus, 678-861-5021. Take your truck. You're going to need it to load up on the savings. Coverage of Cedartown High School Bulldogs baseball on the Big Double A is brought to you in part by Republican State Representative Trey Kelly of Cedartown. This is Representative Trey Kelly. I want to wish all the players and coaches a safe and successful season. You've worked hard to represent us on the field, and I'm proud to represent you in the Georgia House of Representatives. Again, this is Representative Trey Kelly, and I want to thank you for listening to the Big Double A. Go Dogs! This announcement paid for by State Representative Trey Kelly, kellyforhouse.com. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome back as we head to the bottom half of the fourth. The Cedartown Bulldogs have come back. They were trailing quite a bit, but now the uh, it's a one-run ball game. Eight to seven now the score as Jay O'Neill will continue his work on the mound. Number five for the Wildcats will lead it off in the first pitch of strike, 0-1. I'll tell you who that is as soon as game changer. It'll be Thacker. Th careful with Thacker, though. He hit a two-run homer his last time. Rounds that one foul in front of the plate, and it's strike two. No balls, two strikes to count. Thacker, Moran, and Manoy do up here in this inning. Eight, nine, and one. O2 oh, misses outside. One ball, two strikes. The one, two. Line away, two and two. That 2 2 pitch is going to hit him. Comes in on him and hits him, and that'll be a leadoff hit batsman. It's like, oh, they're going to put him back here and say that he did not get out of, out of the way of the pitch. He didn't make a concerted effort to get out of the way of it. He's going to claim that he was bracing for impact. So it's going to be a ball, I guess. So the pitch was a ball, so it's going to be three and two. But no hit batsman. You don't see that called very often, but uh, sometimes you do. And we've seen it now. got some sort of stoppage of play. 
All right, now we're ready to go, maybe. All red looking over to, toward Searchown's dugout. Now we're ready to go. Three balls and two strikes. Another call that goes Searchown's way. Payoff pitch inside ball four. So he'll take his base anyway, and oh, he, well, he almost uh, said something that might have gotten him chunked. But no, he goes back. He gets a little warning from the home put umpire, I think. He's at first base, so he'll get to first anyway on the walk. Here's Moran with Thacker over at first. And there's a high chopper, high chopper. The only play is going to be to first, and the throw over there got it. Four out number one, runner to second. And that ball went straight up in the air as soon as it hit. That was a turf hop, no doubt about that. Here's Benoit as we head back to the top of the order. Benoit one for two with a couple of runs scored, an RBI walk and a strikeout. So he's done just about everything he can at the plate today, except for, well, he's got an RBI, so he's, scored, he's done that too. Jay O'Neill. Comes set. He has struck out six men since he came in relief, the third Bulldog pitcher. And that's low and, a, low and inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes now to Benoit. <laughs> Pitch on the way. It's outside, ball two. O'Neill has thrown 42 pitches, 27 strikes, so a little over 50-50. And that way outside, that'll put the runner at third base. A wild pitch, three and nothing now. Three balls, no strikes with one out. An insurance run for Whitewater, 90 feet away at third. Jay delivers a 3-0. Strike called, 3-1, right there on the outside corner. The game on the field to our right is still going on. It looks like it's about maybe the sixth inning. This one in the bottom half of the fifth. 3-1 pitch. Call strike the fastball. Kind of zipped it in there. Three and two. Of course, Jay plays travel ball, so he's played many a games here at Lake Point over the years. Many of these Bulldogs have too, whether it's been high school or travel ball. That one gets away. Ball four back behind him. Runner will not advance from third. Kind of surprised he didn't. The runner goes to first base on the walk. So a 3-2 pitch misses. And now runners with the corners with one out. Coach Johnson comes out of the dugout and heads toward the mound. I haven't seen uh, Coach Smith here today. I don't know if he's not here or, not, or what. I think he's actually not here today. So Coach Johnson will just go out there to talk to him. So Coach Smith, if you're listening, Shout out to you, my friend. We're talking to from Coach Gavin Johnson. And he heads back to the dugout. He'll face Noggles. Noggles 0 for 2. A run scored. He's got two RBIs. A walk as well and a strikeout. All right. Starting this spring break off. All right. Double play would be nice. Dogs have been, been unable to turn one so far. There's a big swing and a miss on a high fastball. Nothing in one to count. It is beginning of spring break for Cedartown. Next week, we're on spring break. Polk School District. Ground ball to shortstop. Maybe two, six, four, and not in time. Ace Allen 
Took a bit too long to throw to first. He had to double clutch. Had he not double clutched, it would have been out number three. But it scores another run for Whitewater. They're up now nine to seven. And the runner's safe at first base. And Ace, you know, Ace can play just about every every position on the infield. Strike call, nothing in one of the count. I'm, I've never seen him play first base, but uh, typically he's on the left side of the infield, whether playing short or third. But uh, maybe one other time this season I've seen him play at second. That's outside ball one. Not that he's not capable of doing it. He's definitely capable. One one pitch. And that gets past him, base hit into right field. Runner's going to turn head toward third. The throw comes to third. Short hops him, throw to second, will be not in time. Second and third there on that play. A double there for Ellington. Again, Samuel Formby has that cannon out there in right field. And by, Almost a close play. Here's Isaac Elson Peter. Elson Peter one for two. Walk a run scored RBI. Ball one just missed. One ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Foul back. One ball, one strike. A run is in here. Two run lead now for Whitewater, nine to seven. Jay O'Neill with runners in second and third delivers. Right between the legs of Gavin Allred, back to the backstop. It is now 10 to seven. I mean, right between his legs. And everybody moves up 90 feet. Second run to score in this inning. Inside corner just missed, three and one. O'Neill sets and deals. Ground ball hit to first. Race to the bag, it will be won by Dingler and that'll retire the side. But two runs come across as the Whitewater Wildcats counter our two with two of their own and take a three run lead to the sixth inning. 10-7 is the score. Back after the 60 second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Cedar Stream, the industry leader in screen printed apparel. They offer screen printing, embroidery, and signs and banners. At Cedar Stream, they have a fully automated screen printing facility here in Cedar Town with the ability to efficiently and effectively distribute products all over the United States. Cedar Stream is a local family run business with a big vision. Contact Cedar Stream today to find out what they can do for you. 800 686 7488 or cedarstream.com. Cedar Stream, shirts, it's what we do. Hey, it's the Border Mexican Restaurant located at 718 North Main Street right here in Cedartown. Their phone number 678-246-1031. They serve a wide variety of your favorite Mexican food made fresh daily. Great food, great fun. It's great for the whole family. Come see us at the Border Restaurant right here on Main Street in Cedartown. Or you can call for takeout at 678-246-1031. The Border Mexican Restaurant is the best Mexican food north of the border. That's the Border Restaurant right here in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. We head now to the sixth inning. Cedartown now trails 10 to seven after the uh, Whitewater Wildcats scored two in the fifth inning. Jay O'Neill surrendering those two runs. It was, uh, he was looking pretty good and then all of a sudden a couple of runs come across and a wild pitch brought home one of those runs. 
Looks like we have another new pitcher. It'll be Cochran for them. Let's see if I can get you his first name. Tanner Cochran, number eight, the new pitcher. So he'll take over as we head now to the bottom half, rather the top half of the sixth inning. And Tony Ware will lead things off. First pitch is high and tight. One ball, no strikes. We are underway here in the top of the sixth inning. Cedar Town will play Cartersville in the nine cap. It's scheduled to start at six. Could be a little bit later than that. That's fouled away. One one the count. Tanner Cochran. Pitcher number four for the Whitewater Wildcats. So Greater goes an inning, gives up three hits, two runs. They're both earned, one walk, one strikeout. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss, one and two. Fly ball to right field. Benoy. Drifts over, still drifting over, falls down as he makes the catch. It'll be out number one. Here's Samuel Formby. The wind's still kicking out there pretty good. Cochran deals to the plate. A check swing. He did not go. One ball, no strikes. One zero misses outside. Two and zero. Two balls and no strikes. Two all the way. Bounces up there. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Samuel for me. Samuel, by the way, today is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. 3 0 pitch. Strike one called outside corner. Hitters count now to Samuel. Here it is. Swung and missed. Three and two. So the count now full. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch. Swung and missed. Strike three. Two gone here in the top of the sixth. And that will bring up Dalen Holiday. Dalen is last time up. Had a base hit. One for two. A couple of runs scored. And he's also walked one. So not a bad day at the plate for the Bulldogs' DH. Cochran sets and deals. Outside to Dalen, one ball and no strikes. Pitch on the way. Ground ball up the middle. Throw goes to first base in time, and that is out number three. So a three up, three down inning for the Wildcats as we head now to the bottom half. Cedartown trails 10 to seven, back after this 60 second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. 
Bradford's Drug Store on North Main Street in Cedartown is your locally owned and operated Good Neighbor Pharmacy. Bradford's accepts most prescription plans and remember Bradford's for all of your gift and decor needs. Bradford's pharmacists take time to get to know you, explain your medication, and answer any questions that you may have. Go by and see Bill Brewster and all the fine folks at Bradford's the next time you need a prescription filled. Also use their convenient drive through Bradford's Drug Store, 500 North Main Street, Cedartown, 770-748-3100. And all the folks at Bradford's say, go dogs. Cedar Valley Golf Course has been the place to play golf in Cedar Town and Polk County for nearly a century. Locally owned and operated since 1924, Cedar Valley Golf Course offers 18 holes of some of the most beautiful fairways and greens in the area. Cedar Valley Golf Course is a proud supporter of the Cedar Town High School Bulldogs and the greater Cedar Town and Polk County region. Call for tea time 770-748-9671, located just south of Cedar Town at 1811 Buckhannon Highway. Cedar Town's original golf course, Cedar Valley Golf Course. Cedar Town High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. We head back to the bottom half of the sixth inning, or to the bottom half of the sixth, we should say. Cedar Town trails 10 to 7, a three run ball game. And another new pitcher for the Bulldogs. It's going to be Graham who will be out there for Cedar Town. Will Graham will take over. For Jay O'Neill goes three innings, three hits, four runs, three of them earned, three walks, and five strikeouts. So not a bad outing, although the runs would be one he would like to be a bit better at. There's a throw down to second base, and we are ready to go here in the sixth inning. It's going to be Robbins due up first, followed by Davis and Rowan. Bottom half of the sixth inning about to be underway. First pitch is fouled back, 0-1. No balls, one strike. Dogs trailing 10-7. Missed outside, one ball, one strike. Graham kind of chunks it sidearm. Pitch. Line foul to the left side, look out, third base dugout. One and two the count. Two. Bouncer to shortstop. Throw goes on to first base. Is going to be in time. So one out here in the sixth inning. On the ground out. Robbins is retired. That will bring up Davis. Davis now one for two. Strike call, nothing in one. Another chopper to shortstop. X Holiday fields and throws over there. And the catch is made over there at first for out number two. So another five, six, three put out and two quick outs. So Davis retired. Here's Rowe in the catcher, 0 for 3. Davis now 1 for 3. Graham delivers, outside, ball 1. The 1-1. One, one. Hit on the ground a second base. Ace Allen over to first. And the inning is over. Three up, three down. One of the cleanest innings we've seen so far today. We head now to the seventh. Last chance for the Bulldogs. They trail by three, 10 to seven. Back after this 60-second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. 
Cedartown Automotive is your one stop for all your automotive needs. For oil changes, new tires, or tire repair, brake work, tune ups, air conditioner service, or repair, think of Cedartown Automotive. Cedartown Automotive is a longtime supporter of Cedartown High School Athletics here on WGAA. Cedartown Automotive on East Avenue in Cedartown. Give them a call today at 770 749 5040 or stop by their beautiful location for fast and friendly service. And all the folks at Cedartown Automotive say, Go Dogs! Looking for a good used vehicle? Don't go out of town. Come see the folks at Dingler Motor Company, 526 North Main Street. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Dingler Motor Company can get you back on the road in no time with their in-house financing. Top quality, pre-owned, late model cars, trucks, and SUVs. Stop by and check out their wide selection at 526 North Main Street across from Livewire Surplus. Call them at 770-748-0906. Search them on Facebook at Dingler Motor Co. That's Dingler Motor Company. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. We head to the seventh inning, the last chance for the Bulldogs here. They will, the Wildcats will keep Cochran out there. He made quick work of the Bulldogs back in the sixth inning. Dogs have, uh, they've scored runs today. I mean, there's seven runs out there. You take it out that five run second inning, Cedartown is well in control of this one. But Cedartown scored two in the fifth, three in the fourth, one in the third, and one in the first for the count for the seven runs they've had. But then uh, five run, one run on the first, five runs in the second, two in the third, none in the fourth, two in the fifth, none in the previous inning. That's their 10 runs. Even in the hit column, but the dogs have four errors on the field. It'll be the freshman Everett Perkins to lead it off, followed by Cole Dingler and Gavin Allred. As Tanner Cochran for Whitewater completing his warm-up toss as the throw goes down to second base. And we can begin the top of the seventh inning. Definitely got the heart of the order down there. Definitely a good chance to score. Got to get base runners aboard, though, trailing by three. Searton and Cartersville will be next. I just checked it. We are on the same field for the nightcap of this one. So here we go. Pitch to Perkins. Called strike right there. Nothing in one. Oh, one. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Tanner Cochran dealing for the Wildcats. Perkins, 0 for 3. He does have a run scored. Now he's 0 for 4 on the swing and miss. Strike 3. One gone here in the seventh. That'll bring up Cole Dingler. Cole is 1 for 2 with a run scored and a walk. So your town has had some chances. I think the bases have been loaded, uh, have been left loaded a couple of times this game. The one out pitch to him, a swing and a miss, nothing in one. Let's go, the 0 1. All speed pitch and a good take there for Cole Dingler. One ball and one strike. The pitch on the way for Cochran. That ball is driven deep to left field. Yeah! Back on the wall, that ball is going to get down in the corner. Routing first and heading to second will be Dingler. It's still in the corner. He can just glide into second base with a one-out single, or double, rather. He's at first base. Yeah! And you can hear, you can hear right there in, at our microphone. There we go! Cole's family is right there. Deluxe! Here's Gavin Allred. Allred is one for one in his one and his two appearances at the plate with a base hit and a walk. Pitch on the way. That ball's driven to center field, but it's playable. K 
Catch is made. Runner's going to tag and head toward third to the cutoff. Throw to third, not in time. Hits Dingler on the throw over there. And he's at third. But there's two outs now. Let's go, Big Earn. And we got a pinch hitter here. Number 16 will pinch hit for the Bulldogs. We'll tell you who that is here in just a moment. Pinch hitting for Blackman. One ball, no strikes to him. It's going to be Owen Gerald, number 16, to pinch hit. Strike called, one and one. One one. Just missed. Two and one. Go DJs. Two one to Owen Gerald. Foul tip. And the dogs down to their final strike here in the first game of the day. Or their first game of the day, I should say. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Dingler over at second base, or was it second base, now at third base on the fly out. And the 2-2 two -two pitch on the way. Upstairs, full count now, three balls, two strikes. Three-two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. And the dogs go down here at home or here at Lake Point. Final score is 10 to 7. The Whitewater Wildcats with a big second inning was the difference maker. Ten runs on six hits, two, er two errors for Whitewater, seven runs, seven hits, and four errors for the Bulldogs. And that will do it for this one. Cedar Town will play Cartersville about 6 o'clock, and it looks like it might start on time. It's 5.33 right now. So we expect to play ball at uh, 6 o'clock this evening. Hope you'll join us for that uh, here on the Seertown Bulldog Sports Network. Hey, uh, Seertown uh, falls to Whitewater 10-7. to 7. We'll talk to you next time. We'll start a new video on Facebook Live, YouTube, and on the NFHS Network. Stay with us on the radio. We've got some uh, music, maybe local news coming up. Uh, so, uh, in fact, let me go ahead and uh, start up the uh, log myself. So... Uh, uh, we can make sure everything goes correctly. So uh, have a good one, folks. Thanks for listening, and God bless and go dogs. W291 DS Cedartown. Your home for the Cedartown High School Bulldogs. AM 1340. And now 106.1 FM WGAA. The Big Double A. WGAA News Time 534 is currently...